our next presentation comes from our team from Manitoba. And so we're very excited to be able to uh, have our next presenters. The first one being um, Angie Hutchinson, who is the Executive Director of Survivors Hope Crisis Center in Manitoba, as well as Renee Hoffert, who is a PhD candidate at the University of Manitoba and was um, very crucial in terms of helping us with this, uh, getting this uh, phase three along. So I'll let you guys take the stage. Welcome. This name, reclaiming our spirits, or excuse me, reconnecting to our spirits, uh, came to us from uh, grandmother uh, Marie Ballantyne, who was an elder who is working with our, our team in Manitoba, uh, who works with Manitoba Kuitnau Okimakinak, who is one of our community partners. Uh, so when we started the process of developing our presentation, um, we went back to our, our grandmother, and I'll speak more about her later on in the presentation, uh, to really ask for guidance on um, naming our presentation in a way that honored the work. So I am presenting here uh, with my co-presenter, Renee Hoffert from U of M, but our Manitoba team consisted of Sharon Mason from Circling Buffalo, Hilda Anderson Prez from Manitoba Kuitnau Okimakinak, Dana Rikio Arabi from Wabung Abanujiak, Jackie Leader from Mama Wichita Center, uh, and Kendra Nixon from the University of Manitoba. But most importantly, all the survivors who shared their secret stories with us. And we honor their courage and their strength for all that they shared throughout this process. Next slide. Um, <clears throat> So the approach that we undertook with our team within Manitoba was really one focusing on reconciliation in action. So the collaborative partnership was really um, built upon the principles of mutual respect and reciprocity. This process had to be situated within the understanding of the historical and contemporary colonial violence experienced by First Nations, Métis and Inuit people within Canada and the resulting impacts that this violence has had not only on individuals, but communities, in particular set, situating with this within the context of the rates of domestic violence experienced by Indigenous people. And it's through this collective work to redress uh, harms and mistakes within the past that we dedicate ourselves to moving forward again in the spirit and action of reconciliation and the collaborative uh, anti-oppressive action. This intention, uh, the intention for the research was to conduct it in a manner that was not only culturally responsive, but safe for Indigenous individuals and communities, uh, and really to focus on meaningful and authentic relationships. Yeah, so I'll just, I guess, add a little bit to what Angie's already said. So during our initial conversations, we knew that our approach during phase three in Manitoba just needed to be different than the westernized ways of doing research. So we needed to develop an approach that took into account the unique circumstances of Indigenous women, girls, families, and communities. And so we worked alongside one another, so Resolve and our Indigenous community partners to develop trauma-informed and culturally sensitive ways of interviewing Indigenous survivors. And collaboration and relationality have been very central to the work that we've been doing. And so what that has, invo has involved is a very thoughtful and meaningful engagement of our Indigenous partners throughout all points of the research process. So including reviewing the research instruments, developing care plans for participants and the data analysis process. And I just wanna say that I've learned so much working with Angie and all of our Indigenous community partners. I've learned a lot about relationships, respect, and also thoughtful engagement. And this approach has really challenged the westernized approaches toward research that I was familiar with and has pushed me to understand research from a different perspective, which is very important to me at this early phase in my career. So I just want to say that I'm really proud of the work that we've done in phase three and all of the ways that we have honored and supported survivors throughout. Uh, 
Um, so as mentioned, we, uh, as a collaborative team, uh, really came up with some guiding principles for the approach uh, that we wanted to use within Manitoba, um, with relationality being central to that. So we worked on that um, as a team within Manitoba, but also throughout the process of engaging um, with survivors. So this honoring and knowledge, uh, honoring of the knowledge and gifts, um, not only from all members of the team, but also all of the survivors who shared their experiences with us. Uh, this approach, um, as Renee has already mentioned, was um, central to reframing research, not nearly as a collection of data, um, but as us undertaking uh, the process of carrying sacred stories of those who've shared with us. Uh, these stories give us very many learnings from um, what they've been shared, and those learnings can really translate into transform transformative change that begin to alter systems uh, and really work towards providing safety. Uh, restoring a balance that's been long lost through the imposition of colonial and patriarchal values uh, really requires a fundamental shift in how we engage in research to ensure that these uh, systems of marginalization are not perpetuated within the research process. Again, the process was undertaken with community partners like Circling Buffalo, Mamaway, Wabung, uh, Manitoba, Kuitnau, Okimakanak, and this really provided the opportunity to highlight strength-based strength -based approaches um, that these community organizations already use uh, and highlight the relational approach that they undertake every day walking alongside communities that they serve. Next slide. All right, so on September 25th, 2019, so a few years ago at this point, the launch for phase three of the CDHPI occurred in various locations across the country. So the launch for the Prairie Region was held in Winnipeg, and it was hosted by one of our Indigenous community partners, Wobung. So Elder Belinda Vandenbrock was present, and she opened the launch by offering a prayer. We also had several other speakers. So we had Angie Hutchinson, Hilda anderson Pears. Sharon Mason, who spoke about the importance of culturally sensitive approaches, trauma-informed approaches, and just different ways of undertaking this research that could really take into account the needs of Indigenous survivors in Manitoba. We also had two survivors that spoke at our launch. So Jenny Lay and Garrett Rodriguez shared their stories and their experiences with domestic violence and domestic homicide. Resolve staff was also present just to talk about the aims of the study and also the criteria to participate. So in addition to uh, the launch that coincided with the launches across uh, Canada, we also held uh, an opening ceremony, uh, which was important to honor and uplift Indigenous ways of knowing within our process. So our team hosted an opening pipe ceremony um, it, with one of our partners, Manitoba Kuitnau Okimakanak, in their Thompson office. Uh, and Grandmother uh, Marie Ballantyne was uh, the elder who facilitated uh, that opening ceremony. And so it was really um, the important recognition of the spirit and intent that we were trying to collectively undertake within the research project uh, and was really um, about setting the intention to carry forward this the work um, in a really good way. Uh, so the, the inclusion of Marie, uh, Grandmother Marie, uh, really was about demonstrating the matriarchal leadership that's inherent in many Indigenous communities. Um, so it was really about uplifting those traditional roles that we've seen interrupted through colonial processes. And we also welcome community members and other members of uh, Indigenous leadership uh, to sit with us uh, at, throughout this ceremony. So this ceremony was really, again, turning back to a living practice of reconciliation to alter uh, the norms that um, are kind of are inherent within Western um, kind of constructs of research. So to know and understand that any, in, any project involving Indigenous people, um, that they must be included as full and equal partners from the very beginning uh, and that uh, that established trust again mutual understanding uh, and honoring of different forms of knowledge and it's only through this full and equal participation that we can truly start to see these two ways of knowing 
come together. So they're both equally val valuable forms of knowledge uh, and can be applied within the context of research. Uh, and so again, just uh, knowing that any research that involves Indigenous people has to be um, be a full and equal partnership with communities, with individuals, and a full and equal partnership uh, honoring and acknowledging different forms of knowledge. Next slide. Uh, so as already has been mentioned a, a few times earlier today, trauma-informed approach was really, uh, really important to our team. Uh, and so we wanted to ensure that the process uh, was not exploitive or extractive and that it didn't leave survivors in a place of opening up a trauma and then having no supports. So that incorporation of knowledge of trauma uh, and the impacts of trauma into the interviews, preparation for the interviews, the actual interviews themselves, and the follow-up was really crucial to our process. Uh, so this included uh, ensuring that survivors had care plans to prepare them uh, for the interview, supports during the interview, and then also care plans for after the interview, knowing that some of those trauma responses aren't always an immediate response, um, that they can occur after the fact, and so ensuring those supports were in place. Uh, these care plans were really supported through the relationships um, with community-based organizations that many of the survivors already had existing relationships with and already had existing supports as part of those relationships. Uh, and again, ensuring that informed choice um, was part of that meaningful engagement with survivors. And to facilitate that informed choice, uh, the team met informally uh, with groups, community-based groups, uh, to explain the process and the intent of the research and how the information um, gathered throughout the research project would be used. So how are their voices going to contribute to meaningful change within communities? Uh, this also included working with Indigenous partners to uh, set up interviews in spaces um, that interview the survivors felt comfortable with. So we often had uh, interviews taking place within community organization settings. And again, this is about uh, understanding and a dismantling of those power structures that are uh, inherent within uh, research and really working to flatten those power imbalances and deliver trauma-informed research. And just want to make a note around cultural safety and just recognizing that cultural uh, safety and cultural appropriateness um, really has to come center from Indigenous knowledges and ways of being and uplifting um, Indigenous ways of knowing from Indigenous people. Next slide. Okay, so as we've talked about in the presentation, relationships and relationality have been very key. So we utilized collaborative recruitment efforts that emphasize these relationships. So when I say relationships, I mean those that existed between Resolve and Indigenous community partners, but also, and more importantly, the relationships that our Indigenous community agencies held with survivors. So that was really a way that we were able to successfully connect with survivors. In terms of just a breakdown of numbers, we did connect with 17 Indigenous participants in Manitoba. So 16 of these were direct survivors. One was an individual close to someone killed within the context of domestic violence. And five of the 17 survivors indicated that they also lived in an area that was rural, remote, or northern. So after we concluded the phase three interviews, we discussed what we could do to honor the stories of the Indigenous survivors, something that we could do as a token of our appreciation. So we decided to give each survivor a medicine bag that included sage and a tobacco tie. And these medicine bags were created by Chantal Daniels here in Winnipeg. So when I connected with a participant about providing the medicine bag, she started to cry. And she said that she felt very cared for throughout the process. She felt that she was important and that her story was important and that she very much appreciated our efforts to be consistent and follow up throughout the process. The Indigenous community partners in Manitoba, Resolve and the CDHPI principal investigators also received a medicine bag. 
And I'll just highlight the importance of that exchange of, of gifts and honoring um, in particular when it comes to Indigenous uh, ways of being is we undertook this process um, as again moving kind of beyond the understanding of a Western understanding of research but really un really about collecting sacred stories and holding them within ceremony. Uh, and so that exchange of gifts is often part of Indigenous culture and ceremonial culture. Next slide. Um, so our data analysis framework, um, which I'll just quickly run through, um, was developed through, uh, again, the partnership of all of our Manitoba team. Uh, so collectively, our knowledge uh, and understanding um, of not only Indigenous ways of knowing, but also Western ways of knowing really started to form what would become our data analysis framework. And this is going to be used in the further analysis of the interviews within Manitoba. So first and foremost, that that is survivor centered. So that inclusion uh, and uplifting of survivor uh, voice their lived experience throughout the entirety of the process, recognizing the holism of an individual, so encompass, encompassing who they are as an entire being, so physical, mental, spiritual, emotional. Uh, you've heard that theme of re relationality come through all of what we've spoken about this morning, uh, and that knowledge transition um, was really about that shared learning knowledge, not only between members of our team, but also between our team and the survivors. Uh, and then that recognition of systemic hierarchies that uh, are existing within our society and taking efforts to decolonialize our approach. Next slide. Okay, and just very quickly, in terms of future plans, we're planning for a closing ceremony this summer and continuing that collaboration in terms of our data analysis. So um, if there are any questions about the approach we took here in Manitoba, please feel free to connect with any one of us and we'd be happy to share the approach that we've come up with.